Hello, friends. It is Tuesday, and we are going through Genesis, Genesis chapter 20. Um, it's good to be back amongst you. Uh, hope you missed me. But Pastor Goodman was amazing yesterday, so I don't think you did. Uh, so uh, we'll wait for a few people to catch up. And once they have caught up and they are amongst us, we will roll. That gives me a few moments to make a couple of shares. Hi, Gene. The Lord be with you. Hi, Felicity. It's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good day. Ba, 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 ba. Hi, Cheryl. Look at all the folks. Um, hello, Jacoby. Linda Kimmel. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Priscilla. My old friend for Priscilla. How's she doing? How you doing, Priscilla? The Lord be with you. I found uh, that... I was a little, I love watching Pastor um, Pastor Goodman teach. He's one of the better teach, teachers uh, in our synod. Um, he, he, he's constantly moving. He's just very, very moving. I got, I got, he's 100% Jewish. He's a Jewish convert. Uh, so I've got that bit of me that, that's sort of jelly of him since I'm only 6% Jew. Um, but um, uh, great teacher, great man, and good to have him as the guest. Remember, this is a... Uh, this is a, hi, Marilyn. I know, Marilyn, that Pastor Hines accepted your call. Um, yes, yes. Uh, so I was a prophet. You would have done well to have him as more than just a vacancy guy. Um, now you have him as your pastor. Uh, all right. So, uh, hi, Beth. Good to see you. Uh, Cindy, Judy, the Lord be with you all. It is storming here, which has Thor a little bit apprehensive. And if I should lose power in the internet, if I lose power, you'll have me for another five minutes before my computer runs out of, uh, well, as, as we like to say in Star Trek, auxiliary, auxiliary power. Um, but, um, let's roll, shall we? We just got done with Lot and I, I gotta tell you, it took me a bit to get used to Pastor, um, the different way that Pastor Goodman teaches with the thought chart and all of that jazz. But uh, so you got old fashioned. Um, uh, the knock on me when I first came into higher things is like he he teaches like a Southern Baptist preacher. So you got the word for word um, thing that I do. Uh, so you're just slumming with the old school here um, after a great day with Goodman. Uh, lot and lot sin, which was, I think, extraordinarily well handled by, um, by Pastor Goodman. From there, Abraham journeyed toward the territory of Negev, and lived between Kadesh and Shur, and he sojourned in Gerar. Now, I don't know where any of these pieces are. Uh, Thor isn't um, afraid of... Uh, yeah, right. Right, that's kind of ironic, Felicity, that he's the god of thunder and he's afraid of thunder and lightning. Um, Abraham said to Sarah, his wife, said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. And here we go again. Remember, two chapters earlier, this happened. Here we go again. Hi, Jennifer. The Lord be with you. Here we go again. Abimelech, which is an interesting name. Melek means king. Av means father. So father, king. 
Uh, Abimelech of Gerar sent and took Sarah. So, it's going to happen again. Previously, Pharaoh took Sarah. God visited Pharaoh, plagued Pharaoh, and Pharaoh was like, what the heck? And gave up a bunch of stuff to Abraham and just like, leave. Why have you done this to me? That works so well, I guess we're doing it again. Before we judge Abraham for either his lack of faith or his lying half-truth, it's good to point out that um, we're not much better. Uh, we are we are not much better. We are sinners, and we doubt and we despair. We a few weeks ago had Peter tell God, tell Jesus that he'd worked all night, and Peter said to uh, throw out, uh, tell Peter he told Peter to throw his net out for a catch, and Peter's like, we've worked all night, man. Pro fishermen, um, and they they caught two boats worth of fish, and the answer and the response was, um, get away from me, God, for I'm a sinner. Um, just this week, just this week, literally this weekend, um, I have my, um, my, uh, uh, ear pods. They've got a nice case on them now, but they've got a nice case on them because, and they're attached to my keys because I lost them and, uh, I lost the case. I took Thor for a walk on, on Friday and lost the, lost the case somewhere. And, uh, I, I looked everywhere in my office, couldn't find it. Then I uh, took him for a walk at night, couldn't find it. Um, took him for another walk, still couldn't find it. The next morning, before I called Apple up to, to order a new headphones case, um, I'm taking Thor for a walk. Again, we're going to walk the same path that we walked before. Because I've got it figured out. I know where they might be, but I still can't find them. And uh, so I tell Thor, look, you're down there. Help me out. And so, um, yeah, AirPods, right. And um, we're, we're going on this walk. He's not helpful. He's down there and he was not helpful. It's like, why? You're like down there. Like, surely you're going to help me. And so I, I pray this prayer. I mean, literally, I pray this. God, if you could do me a, uh, d God, it would be helpful if you get, did me a solid, not the best prayer, and help me find these. Two steps later, there they are on the ground. Of course, Thor passed them. Um, and I'm just like, really? Get away from me, God. Unbelief. And I'm a pastor. My first go-to should have been prayer. But instead, it was reasoning it out. It was, it was, it was um, making the lives of my friends unpleasant because I was mad. Um, uh, all of that. And, and one prayer. What is not even a good one. Lord, if you could, like, like a solid would be helpful. Um, and then when uh, I called up my friend and said, you know, hey, I found my, um, my headphones, like prayer. Can you believe that? Well, that's great. Well, now you're back. Well, if they work. So like the unbelief didn't stop at the find the, the charger point. I believe that the charger had been out in the heat all like uh, all night. And into the morning. And so it's like, um, um, somebody's at the door, but, uh, you know, now, now the charger's not going to work. Cause you know, I didn't ask God for a working charger. I asked him to find them. Unbelief. Unbelief is the root of all sins, doubt, despair. We, we, we are superstitious. Um, uh, saying that if I, I buy this, if I, if I replace them, it'll turn up. We are, we bargain with God. You know, it'd be good if he did me a solid. We, um, uh, we, uh, reason with God. We, we reason out, we figure out. I knew the path that they were on. We bribe other people. If you could find this, I'll give you 20 bucks. I told my, I told my kids, but, um, all of it is, is based on unbelief. So no place, um, uh, no place um, 
no place should we ever judge anyone in the scriptures for what um there was a the, the doorbell and he's always looking up because he's so small felicity so he barked at the ceiling because he that's what he wanted anyway so let's not judge abraham for his unbelief when we suffer from it daily and much uh but uh um, uh, shameful, shameful. I should have prayed. Um, I know better than that. No better than that. Um, back to the text. There's a funny story. Well, Hannah, um, that might help. And it wasn't even a good prayer, Hannah. It was a prayer like I would have prayed to St. Joseph, like I got nothing left, so I'm going to call upon St. Joseph to help me out from my Roman Catholic stuff. It was just an awful. But it's kind of funny in that here I am, a preacher and teacher of God's word, and I get around to praying a day later about it. Um, and Abraham said of Sarah's wife, she's my sister. And Abimelech, the king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah took her. God doesn't wait any verses on this one. God came to Abimelech um, by night in a dream and said to him, Behold, you are a dead man. Ooh. You are a dead man. Text another there, buddy. Um, yes, the Holy Spirit rescued me. And of course, Cheryl, um, these things in our life, these embarrassing moments in our life, um, or the things that happen, or how whatever happens, we should maybe think about as gift. How does this help my neighbor? And the answer to how it helps my neighbor question, besides I'm a lot more um, fun to be around when I'm not angry about feeling stupid, Um is um, uh, so I could pass a story on to you so that you wouldn't, so you would remember to pray. Um, anyway, you are a you're a dead man. Holy smokes! Verse three, a bit like you're a dead man because of the woman you have taken, for she is a man's wife. Did you just see that? Drinking is challenging for me. Did that? I just sprayed that all over my hand. Just having a great day here in Bible class. Um, at a dream. Remember, the Lord visited Pharaoh in forms of plague. Here the Lord comes in dream to uh, Abimelech. Um, you are a dead man. Because the woman you, who you have taken, she's somebody's wife. Verse 4. Now Abimelech had not um, come near her. Um, and so he, he, um, he says, Adonai, Lord, would, 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 would you kill an innocent man? He's like, I didn't do it. It's not my fault. Did he not say to me, she is my sister? And she herself said, my brother. He's my brother. So, um, Abimelech's like, look, don't kill me. Don't kill me. He's my brother, is what she said. Um, uh, she's my sister, is what he said. 
So don't blame me for it. Looks like folks have begun getting their um, virtual conference t-shirts. The uh, t-shirts arrived. Uh, Pastor Yeager just sent me a picture of a beautiful smoking blue um, HT um, t-shirt. This is an interesting thing that he says. Um, in the cleanness and innocence of my heart. No, 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 no. In the, in the integrity of my heart, in the, uh, the, the blamelessness of my heart, um, um, in the, in the, in the, in the blamelessness of my heart, um, in the in the um, uh, in the blamelessness of my heart, in the um, shamefulness of my, in the innocence of my heart. Um, so he he claims both innocence and he claims um, uh, he claims both innocence and he claims um, yeah there they are. Um, that's bad. He claims both innocence and he claims, um, uh, we're going to have to edit this video. Um, he claims both innocence and he claims, um, uh, and he claims, um, just this, this, um, just this, this, I didn't do it. And you would think that God would, um, that God would, uh, oh, I see what's going on here. I got it. You would think that God would, um, uh, that God would, uh, um, that God would, would, um, uh, tell him you're not innocent. You're not without sin. You're not, you're not this. You're, you're, you're not this. You're not without sin. Um, and he doesn't. He doesn't, he doesn't say that. Instead, he says, um, you know, uh, instead he says, you know, the, the, yeah, I get it. I know that you have done this in the integrity of your, of your heart. And it was I who kept you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. So it was, you know, I know that it was, it was, um, I know that it was you. I know that you didn't do this. I know that this isn't your fault. I know this, this isn't your fault. I know this isn't your fault. So I know this isn't you. And so, um, uh, he, he doesn't ever, he doesn't condemn him for it. He doesn't damn him for it. I know that this he isn't your fault. He um, doesn't, I know this, this isn't he your fault. I know he doesn't, it isn't Abimelech's fault. And God recognizes that. But it was I who set your heart from sinning against me. Therefore, I didn't let you touch him. Therefore, I didn't let you touch it. So, um, 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 so that's a gift. That's a gift. That's a gift for him. All right, continuing on. Now then, return the man's wife, for he is a prophet so that he will pray for you and you shall live. So I kept you from sinning against me. I kept you and I did not let you touch her. So return the man's wife for he is a prophet. What a great text here. Return the man's wife for he is a prophet. Um, 
so that he will pray for you and you shall live. Notice he doesn't say, um, notice he doesn't say, look. Notice he doesn't say, look. Um, I'm going to fix this for you. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say, I'm going to fix this for you. He doesn't say, I'm going to make this better. He doesn't. Instead, what he says is, is, um, um, instead what he says is, is, have Abraham pray for you. I absolutely love this. Have Abraham pray for you. What a difference that is. Notice he can fix it. He can make it better, but he doesn't. Instead, he says, I can make Abraham, I can make Abraham, uh, have Abraham pray for you. If Abraham prays for you, then it will get better. I love that. You should love this too. This is, he directs him to the man of God. He doesn't do it immediately. He directs him to the man of God. He directs him to Abraham. Abraham can fix this for you. Go to the office of the Holy Ministry. I love it. I absolutely love it. And you should love it too. It's a great, great, great text. It's a great, great text. And it, it's, it's just outstanding. It's just outstanding. Return the man's wife. He is a prophet, so he will pray for you and you shall live. But if you do not return to her, know that you shall surely die, you and all of yours. Surely die, you will die, die. Moat, moat, you'll die, die. Moat, moat. You don't return her and you're going to surely die. That's what he says. That's what he says. Don't return her. You'll surely die. But if you go to the prophet, he'll pray for you and he'll save you. Abimelech rose early in the morning and called his servants and told them all these things. And the men were very much afraid. They were very much afraid. Well, heck, yes, they were. Everybody's going to die, die. Um, everybody's going to die, die. That scares me. It should scare you. Abimelech calls Abraham and says, What have you done to us? And how much have I sinned against you? What did I do to you? That you have brought on me and my kingdom a great sin. You have done to me things that ought not be done. What have I done to you? Right, boast in the cross. I love Abimelech's comment. Like, What have I done to you? What have I done to you? That that you've done this, that you've brought this on me. And how have I sinned against you? What 
Was it masterful uh, um, to bring him to God? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is um, God, it works over time to save Father Abraham. Like he works over time to save you and me from our sins. From death and the power of the devil. Not with gold or silver, but his only precious blood and his innocent suffering death. He saves us. He rescues us. Um, Pastor Mines, it's good to have you amongst us. I was on Pastor Mines's, Mines's um, podcast yesterday. Uh, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Have I sinned against you that you brought on me, my, my kingdom, a great sin? That you've done to me these things that you ought not, that ought not be done. And Abimelech said to Abraham, what did you see? That you did this thing. What did, what, what, what did, what, why? Um, what, what, what did you see that you did this to me? I like the Hebrew on this. You have done things that ought not be done. It's a good translation. Abraham says in verse 11, and pull it up to the top there. I did it because I thought there is no fear of God at this place and they will kill me because of my wife. So the same thing again. I did it because there's there was no fear of God in this place and I thought you were going to kill me for my wife. Verse 12 is great. She is indeed my sister. The daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. What an absolute hot mess this is. And when God caused me to wander from my father's house, I said to her, this kindness you must be do me. At every place to which we come, say to me, my brother, he is my brother. So everywhere we go, say, he is my brother. Abimelech took sheep and oxen, male servants and female servants, and gave to Abraham and returned Sarah, the wife. And Abimelech said, behold, my land is before you. Dwell here as it pleases you. And he said to Sarah, behold, I have given you, your brother, a thousand pieces of silver. Um, it is a sign of your innocence uh, in the eyes of all who are with you. And before everyone, you are vindicated. So the gift is there to proclaim that nothing happened. Nothing happened. Abimelech may be a father king, but he's not Sarah's, da uh, Sarah's daddy. Um, he, he is, um, uh, uh, nothing happened there. Abimelech prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech, and also healed his wife and his female servants, so they bore children. So what evidently happened, and we don't see this, what evidently happened is, is God struck everybody that they were going to have children. The wombs all closed up in Abimelech's kingdom. And, um, and so what God does is, is um, close all the wombs so that Sarah's womb is, 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 is closed too. So that Isaac will be, without doubt, Abraham's. Without doubt.
crazy, crazy. But Abraham prays and God heals Abimelech's kingdom's closed wounds. Wombs, wombs, not wounds, wounds, wombs. Crazy. For the Lord had closed all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abram's wife. That's it. That's 18. Shortly done. Easily done. So uh, Abraham leaves the area. He's um, um, He's made a mess of it. But God is his savior and ours too. And if God works behind the scenes, making good out of Abimelech's evil, how much more is he um, a good out of Abraham's evil? How much more is he working behind the scenes with you to save you, to rescue you even from yourself? Great place to stop here. Make sure you register for the virtual conference. We're not going to go into the next chapter. Make sure you register for the virtual conference. Higher Things is virtual conference. Uh, Higherthings.org, the virtual conference is August 6th and 7th. There's 10 plus hours of content along with hymns, competitions, and the like. You can view it live or you can view it later. The, for You have the content for six months when you register. It also gives you six months free access to MyHT, which is Higher Things' is social media pr- platform for youth um, and for... Um, uh, uh, for youth and for those who um, are teaching those youth, a place where youth leaders can get resources from one another and a place from um, uh, where, uh, I know, only 30 minutes today, and a place where we can um, um, where we can also interact moderated. Uh, we can have our kids moderate, have a moderated interaction together. Tomorrow, chapter 21. Have a great day. I'll see you in a hop, skip, and a jump. Have a great day.